Welcome to Monarchist Minute, Royalist News and Discussion out of the good old U.S. of A. I am Charles York, and today we have updated the format temporarily to see how this works. So a little bit of a reduced, uh, reduced crew tonight. We have Kaiser Bob, Trad Raider, Victor, myself, and our Vice Chancellor, William Stout. Um, so we only have a couple of topics tonight. Uh, one topic, Leon will be joining us, and one of us will volunteer to be quiet. Um, but our first topic, it is Local History Month on Monarchist Minute, uh, in order to better emphasize ourselves with the calendar that I should make. Uh, we are going to, or our national holiday, or not holiday strictly, our national observance calendar, um, we are going to celebrate a made-up uh, observance that I came up with last week. Uh, we're going to be talking about our local um, histories and regional histories and whatnot uh, from our states, our regions, our communities. Uh, stay tuned for next week's episode, which will take place during Let's Pretend Our Government Isn't Run by Politicians and Run by Respectable People um, uh, week. Um, yeah, well, I'm, they're respectable people in government, I think. But anyways, our main topic, first topic, uh, regional history. Um, I hope each of you has a good story, and we're going to put Kaiser Bob. Tell us a story, folk story, history, whatever. Right. Just make it convincing. All right. So, my hometown is um, Ottawa, is Ottawa. Illinois, Illinois. Why was there an echo? That Was that my uh, my end, or was that someone else's end? I think I think it might be Trad. No, it couldn't have been. My mic was muted. Oh, oh okay. All right. Uh, I, I think it was Will's. All right. So, my hometown is Ottawa, Illinois. It is used to be in, in an important city in Illinois, but it kind of lost relevance in recent years. Just to tell you how important it was, uh, we were the first city that held the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Now, I am sitting on a gold mine of various stories, uh, ranging from said Lincoln-Douglas debates to the Radium Girls. But tonight, I'll talk about the Ottawa rescue case. And, uh, one moment, it might... I think froze. All right, here it is. So in 1859, Jim Gray was a slave from uh, Missouri. He, uh, upon his escape, he was apprehended in Illinois by slave hunters. He was taken to Ottawa for a hearing before Justice John Dean uh, Cotton of the Illinois Supreme Court. Uh, Northern Division. On October 19th, with a crowd waiting at the Ottawa Railroad Station on East Marquette Street, Braid arrived. His legs were chained, his arms uh, pinned, and he was led by a rope around his neck. Abolitionist John Hozak was a Ottawa grain and lumber merchant. He called out, What crime has he committed? Has he done anything but want to be free? On the next day, hundreds of people gathered around the Ottawa courthouse. Uh, Cotton ruled Gray uh, free of state charges but ordered Gray's captors to take him uh, before the U United States commissioners at uh, Springfield for a hearing under the Federal Fugitive Slave Law, which had recently been passed. The li likely outcome would have been Gray's return to Missouri and enslavement. However, the abolitionists were ready the U.S. Marshal, leaving the Ottawa Courthouse with Gray, was 
restrained by several men, Hasak grabbed Gray by the arm, saying, If you want your liberty, come. Gray was escorted outside where he jumped the fence and leapt into a waiting carriage. The carriage sped north of LaSalle Street, then passed on, no, pa then east on Superior Street before crossing the Illinois and Michigan Canal aqueduct uh, bridge over the Fox River, heading onward towards Canada. Isaac and several other abolitionists were arrested by federal authorities and taken to jail in Chicago for trial. During the trial, Chicago residents treated the Ottawa men as celebrities for helping uh, Gray escape. And that, my friends, was the Ottawa rescue case. All right, Trad. Firstly, I guess, say where you're from for the audience so of course of course so <clears throat> my hometown is actually in scotts bluff nebraska but i live in lincoln nebraska currently and my hometown is fairly famous at least when it comes to bodies of water for a part of the salt creek that runs through the t uh, city called dead man's run now most people don't know where Dead Man's Run got its name unless you live in Lincoln and have heard the story. But basically, Nebraska used to be a salt mining town. And it was renowned for the amount of salt it actually was able to produce and send to the rest of the country, which at the time was useful as refrigeration had not yet been invented. So there were these men who would, be, who would become rich off of uh, selling the salt that they could mine from the surrounding areas. And they became known as the Salt Barons. And soon enough, their workers, who were treated harshly and who worked under harsh conditions within the mines, became known as Salt Dogs, which is a common name for Lincolnites and people around Lincoln. But eventually, a man named Holmes, a Salt, a salt Baron, became very tyrannical with how he would order around his salt dogs and how he would abuse them if they did not give him as much salt as he required for sale. And eventually, the workers started striking against him. He did not like this, so he started hiring men from Omaha. And these men would, in the middle of the night, find salt dogs who'd been striking, and those men would not appear for a few days, and then they'd be found in the run dead and their bodies encased in salt and they would be preserved like eat so eventually the striking got so bad that the daughter of a salt dog who'd been found in the run gathered a group of the salt dogs and they proceeded to enter the baron's home take him carry him out to the run and throw him in with a lead weight around his ankle causing him to drown and die in the run. And nowadays, if you go out at midnight and walk along the banks of the run, you still might see the salt baron ordering around his salt dogs. That is the story of Dead Man's Run. Well, a ghost story. I like ghost stories. Uh, well, if they're true, it's kind of tragic. But, um, Vic? Seems a worthy fate, though. For such a terrible, terrible person. Yeah. Well. Still wish. Stop, uh... me. Oh, Stop me if you've heard this story before. Oh, but before you do that, you have to give me a clever title for the time card. It was 1814. Oh. A, a lawyer named Francis Scott Key was held. On a British prison ship because he was attempting to avoid impressment of his, he was representing Americans who were impressed into service by the British Navy. He was a, on the ship in the Chesapeake Bay and all throughout the night. The British 
decided in one last stand to bomb the local fort. And all through the night the bombs rained on and on and on. But the flag of our young nation never wavered. It was never taken down, which meant that the fort remained in American hand. When Francis Scott Key saw the sun rising above Fort McHenry in Baltimore, he saw the stars and stripes still there and wrote a poem he called The Defense of Fort McHenry. We call it the Star-Spangled Banner, our national anthem. And that is my story submission for the podcast. Okay, well, a lot of you went really super local. Um, let's see, so now I had to think of, uh, I guess, a, a more uh, a more local... Um, hmm. Well, actually, I'll just go with my original one. <laughs> so, back in ye olden days of, I think, I think this was either the late 1800s or early 1900s, uh, the people on Lake Erie would, you know, do the fishy dish and uh, whatnot. Uh, but the Americans would keep to the American side of the lake, and the British would keep to, well, Canadians. The British Canadians would keep to their side of the lake. But then there was this annoying thing where all the fish um, started to run on the other side of the lake, uh, on the Canadian side. And uh, the American uh, fishermen basically had two choices at that point. Uh, they could either die, essentially, because, you know, no fish, no income, no nothing. Or they could um, go and into the Canadian side of Lake Erie and uh, eat up the fish there. And, um, of course, they did that. And this sort of sparked a diplomatic incident um, where... Um, you know, all the Canadian fishermen were upset that, you know, American fishermen were in were in their waters and the Americans were like, well, what you going to do? So what this shows us is that the had the Libertarian Party existed at this time, it might have stood a chance of gaining a seat or two uh, in those coastal towns where the fishermen were a good part of the electorate, because that is a very libertarian thing to do to just defy <laughs> to defy the exclusive uh, fishing rights of one nation. <laughs> um yeah, I guess my story isn't as interesting as all of the rest of yours, so that's uh that that's uh that's sadness. But um yeah, uh Will, do you, you it's now your turn. All right. My my town has a few different stories and local history stories and urban legends but um well i'll let you guys decide you guys want a historical story or you guys want an urban legend which one you want urban legend anyone else urban legend it is yeah i'm on the side of urban legend all right so I forget her name, but we have a real gypsy queen buried in my town. Basically, sometime in the late to mid 19th century, she came into town. Town was still relatively young back then. And she was pregnant. Very, very pregnant. She was due, in fact, to give birth to her baby. She desperately needed to find a doctor. And so, she couldn't, either she couldn't find a doctor or the doctor wasn't qualified enough, but she ended up dying in childbirth and the baby didn't make it either. So they buried her in town, and the interesting part is, they buried her, in, notably in our Catholic cemetery, but they also buried her with the coffin standing up. 
So it's not lying down in state like you normally would. It'd be standing up as if, you know, the casket was standing at attention. And the um, tradition in my town is, if you go to visit her grave, you gotta leave a penny or your curse. And that's a little ghost story behind my town. That's it. It's kind of a short story. Very right. interesting. Um, wow, this is actually kind of short. I think I think we're actually going to do one of these little do things. Do you want a historical month. story on top of that since that was kind of short? Or... Yeah, actually, I think we can go all around again, but uh, let's go reverse order this. Actually, let's not do reverse order because I have to think of a, another story to go with. But um, yeah, so let's I, just... I have to... Go ahead. Man. No, we we should just we should just move on. I don't I don't want to. I don't have a second story to give. Uh, I oh, have, well, I, I have uh, some breaking news uh, coming out of Montana. There's explosions uh, happening in the sky. There's a video going around on Twitter where there appears to be a jet flying by a residential it's area. On the balloon, yeah. <laughs> and uh, a black it's not can being be heard, the screen goes white and smoke can be seen so it seems like the US government has finally shot down the Chinese air balloon moving on the, lo the next local story is how Will suddenly disappeared and then was replaced by a version that looked like him in almost every way. It sounded like him in almost every way, but yet he was somehow less himself. And all of his friends and acquaintances are wondering what happened. But anyways, uh, so I guess um, since Will, you seem so energetic, and I know I think all of us here know about the balloon. Is it was it actually the balloon, or is this just a random explosion? <laughs> well, I don't know what else the jets would have been aiming at. Well, I mean, well, someone, someone, do a back check real quick um, uh, on that. Uh, a fa fact check. Someone do the the who is it? Snopes. Let's see, Snopes. Did uh, did Biden actually do something competent? Mostly false. No. Um, <laughs> but uh, imagine if imagine if we owned Snopes. Like, did any did ex Republican politician here do anything good? Mostly false. Did ex did ex Democrat politician do anything good? Mostly false. Uh, we should take well, over Snopes. You just saw the video footage on Twitter. Is that is good. beautiful. Absolutely. So it is the balloon. It has to be. Cause... Well, it says it's something, but it was near where the balloon was spotted. I'm posting the tweet I saw now. So it's not confirmed that it is the balloon, but I don't know what else the U.S. military would be shooting yeah. at in that region. Last, last known location was in Montana, so I don't know what else it could be, but it has to be that balloon. Well, your audio is echoing mine. Uh, okay, so, so you just tweeted that, okay, so, uh, I guess, the balloon, um, I, I think that we can learn a very important lesson here. We can learn yeah, it's that, that clearly China isn't a threat, that the best thing they could send to spy on us was a bloody weather balloon. Fact check, okay, <laughs> oh, no, now I'm doing it ironically. Oh no, I need to be sent to rebase vacation camp. But anyways, uh, okay, okay, so I think the lesson here is, okay, I think the China, okay, let's be honest, the Chinese have actual, like, spy satellites that are probably doing a better job, this is, I don't know, I don't know what the Chinese are doing. But the, to, to say that the Chinese aren't just spying on us, uh, this is their only method of spying on us, like, that would be, I, I think that would be an incredibly foolish supposition. Um, but uh but if if in if in the chinese are uh i don't know i think the lesson here is make your spying as plausibly deniable as possible like remember when that u2 got shot down in russia oh yeah uh, and they said it was like a 
weather plane. A, a weather observation plane. Actually, I have a book about the U-2 incident signed by the son of the aviator who was shot down. I haven't read it. Well, I got through, like, the two pages, but... behind Roswell was that we used the weather balloon back before we had high-altitude craft to spy on the Soviets. And that was the weather balloon that crashed in Roswell. And so when the U.S. government said it was a weather balloon, they weren't actually lying. But then a bunch of nut jobs went and said it was aliens. And so the U.S. government decided to run with it. Like, you know what? It was aliens. Yeah, I will. Apparently, and this is, I got this from the Internet. So, um, I don't know if this is rumor or actual fact. And you know what? I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to, if I don't know it's true, I'm not going to say it. But let's just say that it would make sense. I don't know of any, I don't, I don't, I don't know if the government's ever admitted to doing this, but it would make sense that the government is trying to get people to focus, like to get it, like to get it, like you have all these people who are like trying to look into what the government's doing to see if there's a bunch of shady stuff. And so the government, um, says um yo uh look over here and creates this diversion of something that seems shady like aliens or whatever and so, uh, so the government can get back to its business of charles doing breaking other news there's stuff. a second balloon uh, Wait, oh, the a, second balloon? a second balloon That's this is from chinese... fox news Are you and the pentagon kidding? confirmed it Dang Why it, is there a bomb. second balloon? <laughs> the, <sighs> special. You know the Chinese like a good deal. <laughs> I mean, I mean they just, they got a good deal. Okay, okay, now now what we need to do is we need to pull in Israel during the I can't remember if it was the um six day war or if it was one of the other conflicts, but they flew a fighter over the Oswan Dam and dropped a bomb full of paint on it to prove that they could wipe out the dam. We need to do the same thing with the Three Gorges Dam, not a pro point. I, I think the Chinese would be a little more upset uh, at us violating their airspace than our government is by the Chinese <laughs> that's violating yeah. ours. Don't forget, don't forget, China is a nuclear power. They still look at nukes. Nuclear. Never mispronounce that word in my presence. Okay. Nuclear. Anyway. Nuclear, nuclear, right, whatever. This is America. I'll call it nuclear if I want. Thank you very much. Nucleus power. It runs off the it runs off the uh, center of a cell. It runs off like the, the brain of the, the cell. The mitochondria curve. is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> well six anyways, so Okay, so we learned that the Chinese have gotten a two for one on spy balloon spe special. Allegedly. Um, where can where can I get um where can I get my spy satellite? Is the sales still on? There's one in Canada. A lot. There's more. How many balloons did the Chinese buy? Oh, like, I mean, I'm not even that like expensive to make of these kill. darn things. Like, what do these like? What like? What does this balloon look like on ground level? Like. <laughs> It, it probably Good looks like question. a giant white ball. Oh, it is. Um, let's see. It, it is. It's literally like just. The moon. Yeah, like the moon. It looks like the moon. Except it's like the moon got pale. Oh, wait. They have another set of balloons in Canada and Latin America. <sighs> is that what I'm reading so, correctly? I was honest. I was honestly going to make a joke tonight about the balloon saying they should just send Alec Baldwin to shoot it down. <laughs> oh my! Oh, well, okay. if you want, if you want innocent civilians dead. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, oh, like, I mean, uh, I just to disclaim, like Monica's were... America does not advocate for the murdering of. Anyone, in, especially innocent civilians. Well, like, I, I, I think remember that, hearing that they were worried about the falling debris hurting someone, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, it's a weather balloon. What's going to fall? The silk? Well, I mean, yeah, but in fairness, in fairness, if a large, I don't know how large these things are. If a large enough piece did manage to fall on someone, he could probably, he may run out of oxygen before he's able to. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm no scientist. 
I mean, I, my my. Uh, so uh, my uh, knowledge of things basically is like wondering how when you have a bolt action rifle with an internal magazine, how do you, how does how do you load it and then the rounds not pop back up? Like I'm trying to mentally figure out that problem. Like that's that's my level of scientific knowledge. So I mean, I'm just but I'm just saying that debris may still be a concern. If people are con if the government's concerned about debris, there may be a reason to be concerned about. Debris. Actually, yeah. funny story. So well, maybe my... we should. Well, maybe we should have any other. If if there are any gun owners listening to this podcast, drop a, drop a comment and if you think Charles is either on base or off base with his critique. I mean, the debris from the weather balloon can't be any more dangerous than that tiny radioactive pebble the Australians lost last yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> And someone found it too. <laughs> what happened? Uh, oh yes. Do we wish to discuss a new topic? Um, honestly, I think that this this the time segment is just gonna be random news stories from yes. here on out. Yeah. I mean, I well, want this to be a shorter episode, but for twenty seven minutes is a little too short. I'll tell you yeah. about I'll tell you about that pill that they lost, but first, Charles, to answer your question about the bolt action rifle, it's called feed lips. Anyway. So, for Australia, they seem to have lost themselves a bunch of, I believe it was plutonium, but was I might... They, it was cesium. Cesium, yes. Well, and the fun thing is, someone found a little metal tube, and they took a picture of it and said, what is this? And people were asking for a closer look, but he couldn't bring his camera too close because then the quality started degrading by a lot. And in case you don't know what that is... Oh, that's, dear. That's nuclear radiation degrading the actual lens of the camera because it's shooting neutrons out and literally tearing the camera apart. Yeah, like all the static from all the footage from the Chernobyl disaster, that's not because the Soviets had bad cameras. It's just because the background radiation was that high. That it was showing up the on the film. Oh, like, oh, have you, you guys seen the picture of, like, I think it's called the elephant's foot, like, was just, like, this giant Yeah, that's why the photo man. was so yeah, grainy, was because the radiation ruined the film. Well, and if you want, I mean, like, if you want something scarier, if you were in, like, if you ever see in video games where that happens, like, in Fallout or whatever, where you're, where you get, like, really blurry vision when you go up to something radioactive, that happens in real life, because the radiation will tear into your eyeballs. Oh, that's... Yeah, um, I mean, but I would like, I mean, obviously, I hope everyone, like, you know, people got out okay in those pictures, because I don't know if we know specifically who those people were. Probably they died, like, pretty soon after that photo was taken, but, like, I think it'd be hilarious if, if, of, of like, the, what was the two people in the picture of the cameramen, like, were the least affected, like, they just... Oh, well, believe me, an interesting fact about that is that... We know for a fact it can be damaged by an AK-47, which tells us someone was goofing off while looking at that thing. Oh yeah, I remember that story because they wanted to break off a piece of it for a sample to study, but they couldn't figure out how to get close enough to it without the operator being exposed to a lethal dose of radiation. So they thought shooting at it with anti-material rounds might work. And it kind of did. I mean, they couldn't really go in and recover the pieces due to previously right. stated information. But if they could, I'm sure they would have. Like, and then anyone studying it would have died. Uh, it, will, Kaiser... it just amazes me. The Soviet Union took a look at this giant piece, this multi-ton piece of semi-molten radioactive slag and said, hmm, I'm going to shoot it with an AK. That, that's the Soviet reaction to anything, is shoot it with an AK and hope it works. You know, the big thing I don't understand about the Chernobyl cleanup, and this is going to sound real dark, and I'm glad they didn't do this, but at the same time, knowing the Soviets, I don't understand why they didn't do this. Why they didn't use penal squadrons in the cleanup instead of normal enlisted soldiers. To an extent, they did, um, but they generally didn't use prisoners for the fear that, number one, they would steal radioactive or government secrets or stuff like that's, that. That's a fair concern. 
They did, however, hire very poor people to um, do the work. They actually, well, hire is a is an interesting term, but they basically went to a mine in Siberia and took all the miners and took them to Chernobyl to right, they took dig out the a coal hole. miners. Yeah, I yep. remember that from the HBO series. Yes, so you could basically just be told in the eighties, yeah, you're going to Chernobyl. We don't really care if you die; you're just going. So if they can do that, why would they use prisoners when they could use – because the whole thing about using prisoners for that is that they're free and you can make them do whatever you want, but it's the Soviet Union. No one's free and you can make anyone do what you want in the Soviet Union, so they just used actual professionals. Yeah, and don't forget, they they uh, told the Germans uh, a lower number of how much radiation was coming out of that – uh, nuclear reactor, so when they, they sent the robot out there to clean up the roof, it literally just sh- shut down completely because the radiation destroyed it. Now, yes, I and... know, I know despite misconception, the three divers that went into the basement to open the valve, they all survived. Yep, and also, according to the Soviet and now Russian government, only 33 people died as due to Chernobyl. When the estimated number by most experts is actually in the hundreds of thousands. That's because the Soviets only count the ones that directly died as a result of the accident. And even then, it's not sure that they counted everyone. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, yes. Uh, oh, they all died from uh, leukemia. No, no radia- radiation sickness. They just randomly got a leukemia. Leukemia is number one telltale sign when it comes to cancers caused by radiation, so. Mm-hmm. Because for some reason, radiation really likes to get in your bone marrow and your lymph glands. It's because so it's, the most get... compressed, it's the most compressed of your cells, and so it's the easiest place for the DNA to be torn apart. Right, and given that those parts of the body make secondary cells, like blood cells, that don't reproduce on their own. I guess it has a larger impact, because it's harder to get healthy cells to replace the damaged ones. So, yes. I'm no oncologist, so I don't know how to explain it. Well, I- I'm sure it's like the, the marble, uh, or the, uh, yeah, all the marble men. I'm sure it was just coincidence that everyone who worked on that got leukemia, and, like, all the marble men all died of lung cancer. So, it- it's coincidence, guys, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a, a complete that, and that's another Not to, um, derail the conversation, but you mentioned the marble men, and I actually know a funny story about how, um, the food pyramid was created, and it basically involved what, how um Dwight Eisenhower had a massive heart attack. And so they tried to figure out what it was, and they thought it was because of all the fatty food he was eating. And so that's how we got the food pyramid, until the food pyramid was turned out to be factually wrong. What actually gave Dwight D. Eisenhower his massive heart attack is the fact that he smoked three packs a day. Yeah, and this is your public service announcement. Don't Don't smoke. smoke. And if you are smoking, <laughs> you can quit. The monarchists <laughs> of America believe in your ability to quit. If you need help, contact your doctor or call or take Nicorette. And my the grandfather died from my grandfather died uh, from lung cancer from him smoking. So please, my, don't do that to your loved ones. You can quit. My grandfather had to have radiation in his throat because he smoked. Just gonna say it, we might be traditionalists, but tobacco should be one American tradition we probably don't want to keep around. Well, for the research into cigars and pipe tobacco, though. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> because, hey, look, I have my grandpa's old, uh, it's like, uh, uh, Indian head pipe, and I oh, kind of want to. I kind of want to use it. I'm. I. I haven't gotten around to it, 
but I kind of do, because it makes me oh. seem like a professor. It makes me okay. more than a The secret, than I am. the number one thing, do not... Inhale. Do not, yeah, do not inhale the smoke. Let it mellow in your mouth. But if you inhale it, you are going to be sick as a dog. Uh, remember, if you visit American City, you will find it very pretty. <laughs> Just two things of what you, you must be aware. Don't drink the water and don't bring the, breathe the air. And uh, wear a gas mask and a veil. Then you can breathe, as long as you don't inhale. But that's an unrelated Tom Lair. Make book. sure you bring but, us air then, Um, I suppose, if there are no objections, let's talk about that statement that our dear president put out on Twitter today about creating jobs. There oh. is no way Biden created as many jobs as he claims he did. There is no it. way. I mean, if you consider if you consider LARPing for the regime a job on Twitter, then yeah, there's like <laughs> hundreds of thousands of those jobs occupied right now. <clears throat> I, I mean, we should just become a liberal again, just to become, uh, just to get that paycheck. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, so many of you guys know about the new Intel plant that's being built in Ohio. What um, is that? You don't. You uh, and how Biden has basically been championing this as his um greatest achievement as the highlight of his presidency. Let's do a quick math lesson. Oh boy. That factory once finished in 2025, two years from now, will employ 3,000 people. Wow. There are almost 250,000 Ohioans out of work right now. That is not economic recovery. That is a bone being thrown. It is not even a big bone at that. Hmm. So... <laughs> what is this factory again? It's going to be a um semiconductor factory. They're gonna make computer chips and stuff. Oh, why? I thought that our like all those are aren't the minerals that we need to make computers isn't the mine for that in Cali? Like, wouldn't it make more sense to make it? I in don't Cali? know if we mine it in Cali or what's going on. Well, I'll be back I, in a second. I remember. Okay, so we used to have a mine, but the problem with that kind of mining is it produces a lot of um, waste material that's, like, toxic and whatnot. And so the mine was shut down, but I think there were plans to reopen it, and maybe they did reopen it because, you know, uh, maybe domestic chip production would be a good idea and not relying on, you know, literal communist. But, um, yeah. Uh, but, but Oh, yeah, and also... That was another thing, okay? We can all talk about the Trumpster, the Donald, uh, oh, or whatever you want to call him. What did he do but now? He, no, no, no. Well, no, he, he this was during his presidency. Uh, okay. He wanted to buy Greenland, and I think part of the reason was because Greenland actually has those mineral. I mean, has all those resources, has a bunch of resources yeah, needed for yeah. making computers. So not only would we be giving our Canadian brothers a big old hug, what with Alaska and Greenland, so we kind of like, you know, go curve around them and give them a big old hug. Um, we would uh, we would also uh, have uh, more minerals than we could mine, and who cares about the uh, Greenland environment because, like, two people live there. I mean, am I right? Well, actually, <laughs> uh, point of... Actually, in all seriousness, with the whole environmentalism thing, remember... Uh, God made us stewards of the earth. That doesn't mean we can do with it whatever we want. We're supposed to use it for our own, you know, so we can, you know, live and whatnot. But let's remember that there are going to be people who come after us. It's conservation, not environmentalism. But anyways, um... Plant a tree or something. Actually, though... Okay, uh, let's... And speaking of planting trees, I'd like to ask a question to a specific organization that I don't particularly care for. How many trees has established titles actually planted in Scotland? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Established titles, that great falsehood of an... 
I, I'm Stop not. The titles is the epitome of LARP. Let's be honest. Yeah, and I hate to use that term. A lot of people, when they were promoting this, they thought it was like one of those grift, uh, grifting uh, businesses where you just buy one for a gift for your friend. Like, oh, you just became a lord in Scotland. But yeah, it, it, I don't even think they planted a single tree in this in these supposed areas, especially since their headquarters are in uh, Hong Kong. Yeah, that's the thing that doesn't make the most sense to me. Why would you be headquartered in Hong Kong if you cared so much about the Scottish environment? It's kind of well, like that oh. stupid. Thing about buying stars a while back, you know? Oh. Yes, I, I there is. So it... let's let's bring the let's bring this conversation back down to earth here, but, um... and let's discuss some actual, you know, news. Congratulations is... to, and this is of course. What uh, our 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 leaders call the month of February Black History Month. Congratulations to Wes Moore for becoming the first Black Governor of Maryland. Uh, it's it's uh I don't know Black History Month is kind of I mean. I mean, I don't want to get too deep into this discussion, unless YouTube, you know, kill us, but I, from a co narrative continuity standpoint, Black History Month kind of bothers me, because, like, the way most history classes work is that you go in, you know, chronological order, so you're going, like, you know, it's the 1800s, and then the 1810s, 1820, you know, going... And, you know, Mexican-American War, Civil War, and then whatnot. And then you go to Black History Month, and then you hop around the 1860s, the 1960s, and then whatnot. It's like, it, 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 that that kind of bothers me. I like, I like things in specific orders. Um, a first order, if you will. <laughs> um, I don't know what Star Wars has to do with Black History Month, but... Um, Yeah, so I don't know. I I think that I I think that having I I'd rather just have like having a a time when we celebrate or not a time like like have if we want to do these like th cool things then yeah do it but like have like days when we celebrate I mean we already have like George Washington's birthday is like a federal I don't want to use the term holiday even though that's what we use because it's not a holy day unless it falls on a sunday of course but um the a, a civil day okay, we have... washington and lincoln's birthday into one holiday called president's day Blame. Mm. anyways well either way um so no 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 but but uh so all these civil days like if you, i i i think that having civil days uh or you know, would would be a good thing for like famous Americans, like um, shoot, or you know, and representing America's national, you know, cool things like uh, I can't remember, I don't, I, I, his name went in one year and out the other, but he had uh, helped develop. Uh, he was a Black American, obviously, which is I'm talking about him, but he he had developed a system of brake locks on, you know, uh, for for trains and rolling stock. Uh, so, you know, that's cool. So maybe have a civil day dedicated to American engineering and talk about, you know, him and and uh, Edison and whatnot. And then have a because like if I don't I don't understand. And this is going to probably get me in trouble. But I don't understand viewing things. In in this sort of context, and I know it's it's a response to the fact that throughout history people felt that blacks haven't been included in it. We um, should be embracing black Americans every single day, not just one month, which just so happens to be the shortest of the year. 
Well, yeah, no, no, but I mean, I mean, my, my, my thing is, is. You no, know, I never thought about how it is the shortest month of the year. Isn't it? Isn't didn't they set it in February because it was MLK's birth? No, MLK's birthday was no, last. No, MLK's for uh, MLK days in January. Yeah, no, but but isn't when wait when was he shot? I don't know. I thought I I thought <laughs> it had something. I thought it, it had something. To, well, I mean, on, normally when you have a federal. Shot. Well, yeah, no, no. I mean, normally when you have a a day for somebody, it's either the day he was born or the day he died. I mean, that's typically when you celebrate someone, you know. Um, anyways, no, but I mean, I, I thought I had something. And either way, um, I, I think that I think that if we want to not view, if you if you want to actually start seeing. Americans as Americans, then we just talk about, you know, black people who have contributed to our society. Oh, Will, I can hear stuff coming from your thing. Um, no, I mean, if we want to talk about Americans, you know, we should just say it's, uh, yeah, like, like the, like the, uh, engineers or inventors thing, you know, we have a day honoring American inventors, celebrating American ingenuity, and you talk, and the schools will talk about, you know, here's Edison and his light bulb, and uh, and uh, uh, that guy whose name I can't remember. Or uh, there was a yeah. speaking of light bulbs, there was a, a black guy who came up with a filament for a light bulb, but it wasn't actually it it it, it wasn't it wasn't a filament that was used in production. But hey, that's more than I could come up with. I couldn't come up with a filament for a light bulb. A filament is something I think you eat. Um, but uh, hey, come on, doesn't filament sound like something you put in a donut? No. Okay, just me? Okay. Um, yeah, no, I mean, so that's that's my thing when it comes to something like Black, like, we shouldn't have... Oh, in honor of Black History Month, we have decided to start a series. I don't know if it, I don't know how often we're going to be doing it throughout the month of February, but... Today, we decided to post on Twitter a little bio about the emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, which you can learn more about by going to, well, our Twitter account, Souls. Um, it's not the outro of the video, so. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do you you can't it, it's like a children who wants to open you know christmas presents on december 30 or december december, 30th. <laughs> december december 3rd like uh those those presents are the presents of me uh saying in tandem and chorus link in the below will will um will will be withheld until um the outro of the video. Does anyone have any other current news things? Because we might as well wrap up if there's no, like, did we find out any more information on the balloon? Kaiser Bob's, you want to uh, read that tweet that you posted in the yeah, conference yeah, text, I, I text chat? Uh, defense officials tell Fox News that the balloon over Montana has not exploded. It was not shot down by the U.S. military. Very well then. Uh, Charles, um... All right, we're all we're all good. Wow. Okay. So I don't think this is the record for the shortest episode, but it's certainly the shortest episode that we've had in a good long while. But I like local history month. We're gonna keep that up since the stories are short. We can just put it in the start of next episode. So get ready to chant in chorus. Unmute yourselves, men. Will Kaiser Bob, unmute yourselves. Get ready for the thing. Oh, I Vic. fear. Vic, Vic, uh... Vic left. Vic Leon, would you wanna... like to join us? Yeah, uh, yeah, Leon, you wanna, you wanna join us for, for, for saying our glorious outro phrase? So uh, I think he's gonna say going no. One. Oh, wait, it going twice. Sold in the link in the... Okay. So. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> all right, now we can, we can begin in earnest. <laughs> oh. If you would like to join us live for Monarchist Minute, then you can join us by clicking that... Oh, wait, you can join us by joining our Discord server. Link, Link in, the, in description the description below. below. 
Make sure you hit if... that like button, smash that no. notification. <laughs> no, we do not. We do not say <laughs> no. that. You, you are you are oh, banned. Oh, okay. No. I'm already okay. promoted. Never there, mind. There, there cut is, that out. <laughs> there is no. It won't be cut out. This, this this it will be left in as a monument to your inexperience <laughs> with the podcast, and you will and we will shame you with it ten years from now. Um, I almost stabbed myself. That was a very stupid thing to do. Don't. This is going don't, great. Don't play with knives people unless you're giving it your full attention um yeah uh i'm good okay if you would like to uh go to the hospital after you uh (laughs) accidentally stabbed yourself you can you can drive yourselves car in your garage below uh if (laughs) if you would like to hear us uh if you would like to hear will on Twitter, and I say here loosely, you can join us on Twitter. Link in the description, in the description below. below. All right, I didn't if you are not bothered, if you wish to follow someone, but not get notifications of when he posts something because he doesn't really post things, you can join us on Gab. Link in the description, in the description below. below. If you are of the 65 and older category and think that all of these social medias are kind of uh, lame, but you want something traditional, you can join us on our Facebook link in the description description below. below. Uh, If you would like to visit our website uh, with a H, I guess, because that's how I pronounced it, uh, you can uh, join us over there, even though we won't see you. I don't think we have a little active counter of how many people have visited our website. But you can do that by going to our website. Link, Link in, the in the description below. below. And uh, we have an Instagram, but is it really worth saying? No. Yes, of course it is. You can join us on our Instagram. Link Links in the description, in the description below. below. Okay. And now, uh, I think I've plugged all of our stuff. But there's also a subreddit, but it's not really ours. It's uh, it's all American monarchists in general. So I mean, I'm not gonna really. It's it's not it's not worth it. But uh, when the intro is like, I mean, when the outro is like five percent of the entire runtime. <laughs> okay. Gotta love it. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna have to do second with me since Vic uh, Vic dematerialized into the ether. Um, Would you like me to lead or to follow? Uh, I guess, response, because we follow the rules here. Okay, so, and now, as soon as I write down the little time stamp to do, uh, we're not going to talk about the Scooby-Doo reboot, no. Um, <laughs> okay, so, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Yeah. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. Uh, Until next time, may God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America.